One, two, three, seven. Soccer is a game of lines. An out of bounds shifts the flow. An offsides prevents a rush. The ball soars into the goal. Borders make up the game. But for the sport to take root in Detroit, it took a community unafraid to blur the borders. Since its founding in 2012, Detroit City FC has grown to become the most positive story in the American game. But soccer didn't just appear in our city six years ago. Professional soccer made its debut in 1967 when William Clay Ford founded the Cougars, so named for the car his company debuted that very same year. And over in Scotland, Detroiter Gil Heron broke the color barrier, suiting up for Celtic in 1951. You can still hear stories about the Black Arrow in Glasgow pubs. But back home in Detroit bars, the sport was on the sidelines. Filling a soccer stadium just didn't seem possible. Of course, they say the best way to spot Detroiters is to tell them that something is impossible, then sit back and watch what they do. Detroit City FC first took the field at Cass Tech High School. A roster of homegrown amateurs and former pros, Le Rouge put on such a show that it again begged the old question. Is Detroit finally ready for soccer? This time, a thousand voices answer. Surrounded by a city built on hard work and commitment, the players left everything on the field. And the supporters responded with a dedication of their own. The border between possible and impossible began to blur. Cast Tech couldn't contain the enthusiasm, so with the help of supporter investments, the club moved to Hamtramck. Keyworth Stadium sits in the middle of our state's most diverse city, which itself happens to be in the middle of Detroit. And inside that stadium, borders became bonds. A team playing for its community. A community lifting a team to all new heights. A club bringing the rest of the world here to Detroit. The message of the DCFC generation is clear. These lines, these differences, on the field and off, they don't separate us. They connect us. They make us strong. Come and get it. 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 Come and Good evening, everybody, and welcome inside historic Keyworth Stadium, where tonight it's a celebration of the world's game between two of the most popular clubs in the world. Alongside my broadcast partner, John Krieger, my name is Neil Rule. Happy to have you with us for the first time ever on Fox Sports Detroit and John FC St. Pauli, Detroit City FC, two squads the fans love. It's a celebration here tonight. It absolutely is. The Atlantic Ocean is bridged by two clubs built by supporters for supporters, Detroit City FC and FC St. Pauli. And for City, they've been part of Detroit's renaissance. They began in 2012 on the ball fields of this fair city. Tonight, it's their time to shine in front of the entire world. As Keyword Stadium will take center stage here in the American soccer world. When we come back, we'll have the starting 11s. And of course, we'll kick it. Detroit City FC, St. Pauli. Coming up next. Well, welcome back to historic Keyworth Stadium and let's take you to one of the great supporter traditions in American soccer as the Northern Guard will lead the singing of our national anthem.
New rule, John Krieger back with you as the TIFO is raised by the Northern Guard. Honoring FC St. Pauli and Detroit City FC. Two of the bigger followings, John, in soccer in terms of just straight up passion that the supporters have for the game on both sides here tonight. Absolutely. St. Pauli known for their cult football culture. The transition that really happened in the mid-1980s and Detroit City FC since 2012, both clubs truly emba embracing football for the supporters, not for corporate culture. And that's what we have here tonight. A nice salute by for my money, pound for pound, the best supporters in sports. Absolutely. Detroit City FC and FC St. Pauli out of the second division Bundesliga in Germany. Let's take a look at the starting 11 first for the hometown Detroit City FC. And John Ben Pierman, the head coach in his sixth season here with DCFC, also an assistant at Michigan State as a player at State, won two Big Ten titles, went to three NCAA tournaments. There'll be a lot of movement. That starting 11 will be very fluid here this evening. Absolutely. You're going to see a lot of players play, but the first half you're going to see Ben Pierman's 4-3-3. And number 17, you see there, Mohamed, Bus uh, rather, that's Mohamed Busaidi. He actually is a special story, Neil. He was born in Hamburg, Germany, and spent some time in the academy system of Hamburger SV, the other club in the city of Hamburg. So to play a Hamburg club tonight in FC St. Pauli, a special moment for him. And a lot of the other city players getting a nice nod from Ben Pierman for their great performance in the US Open Cup in midweek, going to extra time against FC Cincinnati before they finally ran out of gas, but a valiant cup, e cup effort. And there, the midfield maestro, Cyrus Sadie. You'll see a lot of him tonight. He's the heart and soul of this club, and it's his time to shine. FC St. Pauli ready to go. Detroit City FC making their way out on to the pitch as you get a look at the head coach of FC St. Pauli, Marcus Kocinski, took over the St. Pauli job back on December 7th of 2017. As we are just about ready to roll here in historic Keyworth Stadium. Here's the keeper for DCFC, former University of Detroit great Nate Steinwasher. He's also a state champion runner-up at Sterling Heights Stevenson High School. And I know he is ready to roll. And in the other cage, Philip Hedervagen made multiple appearances for the German U-17-18 and national teams. We are underway here at historic Keyworth Stadium. Neil Rule, John Krieger with you. A celebration of soccer here tonight in America. A nice touch by the FC St. Pauli supporters. Some red, white, and blue smoke from the away end today here at Keyworth, along with their traditional brown. You're going to see a lot of smoke on the pitch if it's the first time you're watching DCFC. You see a lot of the traditional supporter elements here in both of these fan bases. This first nine minutes of action brought to you by Wheelhouse Detroit. See St. Pauli with some early possession. Philippe Zedais plays it over. Zedais, one goal in 75 career appearances for FC St. Pauli as the smoke begins to thicken. St. Pauli, Pauli will be in a 4 4 2 tonight. Detroit City FC in a, a 4 3 3. But don't be surprised if the midfield is on the wings for St. Pauli track forward and try to put pressure on the city back line. And there's some pressure on the back line right away as that ball is popped up in the air, now high above the pitch here at Keyworth. Settled down with the right foot by Valdemar Sabota. Sabota, the native of Poland, actually scored a goal for his national team against San Marino in a 2014 World Cup qualifier. Of course, some guy named Robert Lewandowski had two goals in that match. I'm not quite sure how soccer worked out for that guy, but I bet he did okay. Here comes the attack on the cross now as the ball is loose. Inside the 18, played out defensively by Detroit City. Nice job for City to clear their lines. Nice delivery into the box by FC St. Pauli. Getting the pressure on the back line early. City's back line needs to find its shape again. They're not even across the back line. It's allowing St. Pauli's attack to make runs and stay onside. Sani Alagui wins a throw in for St. Pauli. Detroit City FC will toss it in. Played back in a misplay on the clearance. 
St. Pauli now, John, in a very dangerous territory off the turnover. Nice job there by City's midfielders to track back and close down the passing lanes for St. Pauli. Make the field very congested, didn't allow anything to get started. Now FC St. Pauli will play it back again. FC St. Pauli estimated to have as many as 11 million fans throughout Germany, making one of the most widely recognized German sides, not only in the top level Bundesliga, but anywhere in the country of Germany. Of course, everyone knows the story, the World Cup success with Germany. And this is a side, John, as you can tell, they've traveled some folks here today. A mirror image, really, of one another. Well, absolutely. You've got fans from all over the country that follow Detroit City FC, and also fans here in the United States that follow FC St. Pauli. There are supporters chapters in cities all across the United States. They've sent delegations here as well. This is the first match on U.S. soil for FC St. Pauli. They stopped in Washington on their way here, stopped off, took a picture in front of the White House, and also met with the German ambassador to the United States, and then came to Detroit to a great welcome and some great festivities last evening as part of their tour. Zobic heads that one along the far sideline. And Alasse Zobic will throw it in. Actually spent some time with Borussia Dortmund in his career up at the top of the Bundesliga. Ball swung out wide to the left side. There's Bubala. Not the best touch by Bubala. It's played out. Cyrus Sadie will give chase against Yi Young Park. Bubala had a good lane there. Just a little heavy on the touch, allowed City's defenders to catch up with it. And the needle is threaded out wide to the left side. Malagui sees it go off his foot. And FC St. Pauli once again will settle down the play. City with a lot of men behind the ball in the early going, just trying to find their legs against the two Bundesliga side. They'll stretch that out as this match goes on. Sing Wong Lee plays it down. Now Detroit City trying to get some of the play, and there's a man that can do it in Cyrus Sadie. Sadie, of course, had that magical goal against Venice last year in an international friendly. And you see the impact right away, John, that Cyrus Sadie has on the game. He can flip everything at the drop of a dime. Yeah, and he forced Maurice Litka for FC St. Pauli to make the professional foul. He had a step, Litka knew it, and there was space through midfield for Cyrus to turn on the Jets. So Litka put an elbow in his back and surrendered the free kick. There's Shrimpton sending out wide, left foot from Roddy Green. Cyrus Sadie trying to settle it down. But here comes FC St. Pauli attempting to counter. It's played away. It's a nice step in challenge there by City. There was joy on that wing and St. Pauli could have found it. Cyrus Sadie sends it up ahead. Ervagen makes the play with little difficulty. Ervagen came up in the Baron Munich youth system. Tons of international talent for FC St. Pauli. But of course, John, when you look across the landscape of the Detroit City FC roster, lots of guys that spent some time in the pros here as well. Absolutely. You look at the history of the club, and you've had Will Mellers Blair that has played in, in England professionally. You've got Wilfred Williams, who was drafted by Sporting KC. Danny Deacon, who spent time in the Orlando City organization. Evan Loro, who is currently in the New York Red Bulls organization. He'll forever be a hero here for his penalty shootout performance against Michigan Bucks a couple of years ago in the U.S. Open Cup. Players want to play in this environment because it gets them ready for the professional level and the history of pros that have come out of the DCFC program show that. Elliot Bentley throws that in. Of course, Elliot Bentley now plays his college soccer at Oakland University. Head coach Eric Pogue. Speaking of pros, Elliot Bentley's a guy that you'll need to keep an eye on as his career progresses. He's shown a knack for making the big play in the big spot. Key conversion of a penalty in the penalty shootout against Michigan Bucks a couple of weeks ago. Just stroked it cool as the other side of the pillow. Found Pater and kept Detroit City in the shootout. They would eventually win in extra shooters 5-4. One ball slotted down the far sideline, getting on the other end of it. Alagui to the middle. We'll get a whistle. Handball. Zaboda was dangerous, but as you said, partner, handball called. It's FC St. Pauli, so the threat is averted. We're in the eighth minute, no score here at Historic Keyware Stadium. 
And you'll rule John Krieger with you. Happy to have you on Fox Sports Detroit, wherever you may be watching around the world. I think we're going to see Ben Pierman make a couple of little changes here, ask his players to come a little further forward. There's George Chamakov on the pitch. Chamakov ahead, moving the shot, the save made, the rebound is put home. It's a goal for Detroit City. Trevor Amon does the deed, and DCFC gets the jump on FC St. Pauli. Amon in his first appearance for City makes it count, beats Hirwagen, and it's 1 0 to the home sides. Chomakov started the break for City, and but by the time it was done, the ball was in the back of the net. So FC St. Pauli, the second division Bundesliga team, finds themselves down 1-0 as we take another look at the replay. And just a stick-to-itiveness, John. Just followed his shot. Hirwagen, I think, was a little fooled by the short hop on the plastic surface. And couldn't corral it, couldn't bring it in. The rebound was big and juicy, and Amon didn't miss. The colored smoke pours out of the northern guard section as you see it in the background. That ball played into the 18. Not a confident clearance. Does he eyes? George Chamakov is having a really good game so far on the wing. Georgia. Longtime local player, played for Schoolcraft College, has been on and off the city squad when a player's been needed. His start today, really a thank you and a nod from Ben Pierman, and he's making the most of it. The next nine minutes of play are brought to you by Strategic Staffing Solutions, the official sponsor of the S3 Beer Garden at Keyword Stadium, and of course, the DCFC International Series. And of course, a big tip of the cap to everybody at Strategic Staffing Solutions, this international series which is what you're watching right now, wouldn't be possible without them. So we salute you. Cyrus Sadie with that ball on the end of his foot, gets attached to a string. Ewan Park leaned in against Cyrus. Cyrus with a little delay step. The service wasn't good, but the move to create the space was classic Sadie. Cyrus Sadie has made many a pro look foolish out on this pitch. Of course, the people in Venice a quattro, the defender for Venice. He's still looking for articles of clothing that he was faked out of down on that left side of the Keyworth pitch. The medical bills from the broken ankles had to be <laughs> prodigious. If you don't know what we're talking about, YouTube Google, it. YouTube, Cyrus Sadie Venezia. You'll find out really quickly. Here comes FC St. Pauli trailing 1 0 here in the early going. George Chamakoff. Twists it around, and pops it back out towards midfield. As he dies, we'll send it back to the keeper, Hervaga. And then we'll try the right side. FC St. Pauli play their home matches in Millentor Stadion, a capacity of 29,546. Interesting side note about that 16,940 of those capacity numbers are standing room. That's how they roll. They have the safe standing in Germany. Some leagues in Europe don't allow it, England most notably. But the German league does have safe standing and the terraces are absolutely rocking. And it's worth noting, by the way, Neil Rule, you mentioned those capacity numbers. The capacity and the, the follower, the, the following of FC St. Pauli really skyrocketed when they made the decision as a club to embrace the supporter culture and embrace their own fans and make them a part of things as opposed to just customers. They went from drawing one, 2,000 fans a game to drawing close to 20,000 fans a game because people in Hamburg knew that they had a club that they could feel a part of and claim some ownership of. And that's where the following for the boys in Brown really took off. They have more than 500 fan clubs worldwide. And of course, Detroit City FC, John, following in those footsteps, you had the opportunity to partake in, in one of those national-wide fan bases, those fan clubs, uh, if you will, that a lot of the Detroit City FC fans around the country have been getting, have 
begun to start. I did. I had a chance to go out and, and hang out with the DCFC, DC Embassy. They're watching at the Ivy and Coney Bar in Shaw in DC tonight. Christos and Pat. A couple of great guys that have built a supporter chapter out there. They get a, their own dedicated room to watch these matches. And remember, this is a club that six years ago was thought up by friends sitting around and having a beer after seeing the popularity of a recreational league in this city and decided it was time for Detroit to have a team. And all of a sudden the team was born and now there are supporters groups all around the country that gather in pubs to watch this team play and they bleed rouge and gold. Trevor Amen with the goal in the seventh minute. And that is where we stand right now. The one coming up for FC St. Pauli. Valdemar Sabota will toss it in. But again, John, Detroit City here tonight. Yes, the opponent changes. Certainly the caliber of the opponent changes, uh, being in the second division of Bundesliga. However, the attack, John, does not. And Detroit City FC, when they scored that world-class goal against FC Cincinnati that we saw going around Twitter, strike in much the same fashion here today. Sure, absolutely. Great you are what you are, right? A great break on the counter. The thing that I wanted to see from them tonight, we didn't really get a chance to get into keys to this match. Yes, it's a friendly. Yes, it's an international occasion. And yes, there's a corner conceded that St. Pauli will take. What we wanted to see from City was better play, better on the counter, and also to shoot the ball, to get the, the ball on net. One of the things that that they didn't have against FC Cincinnati was too many tests of the keeper. They looked for things that were more perfect. And perhaps a simple shot would help. Sabota so plays it towards the back post. And the city back line defends that shot. Will be ripped wide. But again, John, you're seeing over the course of the last few minutes, FC St. Pauli beginning to put some things together. Jan Mark Schneider with the shot and Sabota with the service across toward the back post that was about six inches too high for a man making a, a run that would have had a free header to equalize this match. Nate Steinwasher will put the boot to it. Steinwasher, the man of the match. In their victory at Chattanooga, another friendly at Detroit City FC, a home and home series, one of the old school hockey style home and home series. DCFC went down to Chattanooga and they have tremendous fan support as well. Chattanooga returned the favor the following weekend. That was certainly a lot of fun to be around. You know, it was because you had two clubs in the United States that really followed the same kind of mission as we're seeing tonight from FC St. Pauli. They're supporter built and supporter based and backed clubs. Steinwasher makes a mess of that one on the far side. Alagui crosses it. Trying to settle it down to the 18. Right foot shot will go over top of the crossbar. Sabota had a good look. He put a little too much mustard on it. Well, it started when he didn't have the touch he needed off of his chest. When he couldn't settle it down and put a boot through it and bring it down, that's when he had a bad situation and he couldn't put it on target. And Nate Steinwash, after coming well off his line and making a mess of that clearance attempt, look at that heavy touch, then he slips, then he's rushed because the defender's closing him down, and then it goes over the bar. Now here's City with the possession at the midfield, and they will play it back. So Steinwasher again settles it down. Slides it up ahead. Looking for Mohamed Busedi. Busedi, as we talked about, the German native. That's a great job by Busedi. Stood his body tall and strong and made the defender come over top of him to earn the free kick. Busedi plays his college soccer. At Lubbock Christian down in Texas, had a goal against West Texas A&M last year. And that call also will go against FC St. Pauli. Some good sportsmanship, though. Malagui, as Brandon Bartell hit the turf. Bartell's another one, plays his college soccer at Penn. Played over 1,500 minutes last year. Started every match as a sophomore. That's a great ball for Roddy Green, who goes over a little bit easy there, but that was because the ball was a little bit past him and he was trying to reach. Speaking of big goals, Roddy Green, certainly a snagged one this season as well, and a nice recovery 
Running back by Elliot Bentley again. That's a great play by Bentley. Kept just enough control of his body not to concede the foul. You have a man that's going through on goal, and Bentley's in the least out of control. That player is going to go down and force the referee to make a decision. But that challenge by Bentley, clean and in control, and shepherded the ball away. Elliot Bentley has made an impact on this Detroit City FC roster. Very solid. He's one of those guys, nothing's going to jump out at you when you look at the stat sheet, which is often the case when you're a defender in the game of soccer, but he makes every play that's asked of him. And that's all he wants. He doesn't want to be noticed in the, sh the stat sheet. If he's noticed in the stat, sheet, stat sheet, something's going wrong. The next nine minutes of play are brought to you by Motor City Casino Hotel, the official casino hotel of Detroit's soccer team as FC St. Pauli gets ready for the corner coming up. For Maurice Litka, it's my great honor to welcome in one of the co-owners of Detroit City FC, Sean Mann, up here in the booth on Fox Sports Detroit as Litka fires the corner in towards the 18. The ball got all the way through, and it's played over top of the frame by Alugui. But, Sean, appreciate you joining us up here in the booth. Welcome. Yeah, hey, thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have to pinch myself right now that this is actually <laughs> happening, right? Well, hey, that's in the broadcasting business, that's known as a segue because that was exactly where I was going to go. We told the story a little bit earlier about some guys having a beer, came up with this idea. Well, you know, by the way, now we're playing second division Bundesliga team. There's a, a sold out crowd here at Keyword Stadium, Fox Sports Detroit. You knew this was going to happen, right? When you drew it up, that was on the back of the napkin, right? I mean, I think we always had a vision of creating a club that we would want and we'd want people to support. And, uh, you know, I think in that process, I think hopefully we've kind of uh, pushed the what the definition of an American soccer club is. And, and honestly, St. Pauli has been uh, an inspiration to us from a long time now. Uh, you know, they're truly a cult club. They have a, a passionate, loyal following, and, and we wanted to create a club that our supporters could love just as much as St. Pauli's fans love them. You know, and part of that club creation, Sean, is that it's more than just what we're seeing at Keyworth tonight. City has taken throughout its entire time the opportunity to give back to the city of Detroit, to have construction projects and youth participation, things like the Detroit City Fieldhouse, to give back to the city you call home. Yeah, you know, um, this whole weekend, uh, the guys got in, St. Pauli got in Thursday night. Yesterday, we had a whole slate of these meetups, and it was really about bringing the communities together, the St. Pauli fans, our fans, and, you know, I think that's the power of soccer and the international nature of it, and that, like, it's all about these communities coming together, and uh, it's, it's been really special, uh, you know, and I think the, the see the response we've got from St. Pauli leadership and just how much fun and, you know, the respect that they have for this club is really humbling for us. And, uh, you know, I, I've i been getting hugs all day from our supporters just being like, I can't believe this is happening. And, uh, you know, and I, I just can say thank you to them because if it wasn't for these supporters, you know, St. Pauli wouldn't know who we are and they certainly wouldn't be here today. Sean Mann joining us here in the booth on Fox Sports Detroit. 1-0 Detroit City FC with the lead as FC St. Pauli looks to go on the attack. Alagui makes the move and puts wow. it in the lower left corner of the cage. And FC St. Pauli draws even at one. What a step over there. Just absolutely took his defender out of the picture. Just stepped over the ball, created the shooting lane. Steinwasher, nothing he can do. When, when the attacker is that close in and steps away from the defender with a great move and a great fake, it's just an open goal. And Steinwasher is hoping he fluffed his, his lines. He didn't fluff his lines, and it's 1-1. Sammy Alagui with the goal. He scored five career goals for the Tunisian national team in international matches. So, I mean, Sean, going back to that, these, these are the guys we're talking about that are on the pitch right now here at Keyword Stadium, guys that have scored goals in World Cup qualifying competitions, international matches as well. This is as high level as it's, there is in the world. Yeah, I mean, uh, St. Pauli is massive, right? Like, really, when you look at German soccer, yes, they're in the middle of the table, second division, but... You know, uh, they're up there with Bayern and Dortmund as being, you know, one of the biggest, most followed love clubs in Germany. Uh, but on the field, yeah, <laughs> it's international. Right. Uh, I mean, these are legit pros. And, you know, you look at St. Pauli's budget, it's bigger than just uh, pretty much any MLS team, right? Uh, and they came out here to play us for their first game in America, and it means a lot to us. And, uh, yeah, no, these guys, uh, they're serious. Uh, I mean, it's a friendly. We're all having fun here, but it's uh, – quality uh, opponent to say the least. John, can you take us through the process of how this happened and how this came to be? How did you get in touch with FC St. Pauli and, and what's been the process to bring them here? You know, uh, it was simple enough as like we reached out to them um, and 
There's actually a, a firm, Match IQ, that works with the Bundesliga in St. Pauli to help arrange, you know, these international trips. St. Pauli hadn't been overseas uh, since, I think, like 12 years ago they went to Cuba. So, uh, you know, I think they were reluctant. Uh, so it was really like six months of conversations and uh, them getting familiar with us and putting a lot of faith and trust in, you know, this experience. Uh, but, you know, it, it speaks to the culture. Like, you know, they're, re they're here because of community. It's, they're not here to play us on the field. It's here for a week of festivities that celebrate what soccer can be. So, Sean, you just slide in the DMs and say, hey, what up? And then that's that's all that happens, right? That's how it goes down? You know, it actually gets back to, uh, you know, last year we hosted Venezia. Uh, and that certainly raised our credibility in the European soccer circles uh, to have Inzaghi and that team here. And, uh, you know, I think this is a springboard for even, you know, bigger matches next year. But truth be told, like, I mean, this was number one on our wish list. So I don't know where we go from here, uh, to be honest. Well, Sean, congratulations on, on everything that you guys have achieved. I also want to say thank you for bringing me in, getting us involved with everything that's going on as well. I always say it, this is probably the most fun you're ever going to have in, in a work environment. So thank you guys for everything. Thank you for this match, and sky's the limit, my friend, right? Yeah, it's all about uh, you know having fun and community, and uh, you know hopefully we're doing something special here. Absolutely. Sean Mann, everybody, one of the co-owners of Detroit City FC, kind enough to carve out some time, a very busy guy here this afternoon. FC St. Pauli just tied the match up. Now they're looking to do more. Stepping through, very patient ball played out wide. Steinwasher's on the ground. And they will call a goal kick, I believe. I think that's the signal that's been given. There were appeals for a penalty from every St. Pauli player in the box. This is Steinwasher off his line again. Another nice step over there. Steinwasher comes out to make the play. The ball's left off. Ooh. Alagui wanted the call. Of course, Alagui was the one that scored the goal. Some great work by Jan Mark Schneider. But the official said no dice, Jim Rice. We play on. And City will take that. One thing to note, uh, FC St. Pauli, is this match has gone on. And by the way, here we are in the 25th minute. And uh, you've got a situation where they've, they've taken a moment to analyze the city back line, and uh, they are finding ways to offer service in. They started trying to come in from the wing. They've tried a more direct approach now, but they're keeping the ball on the ground. This isn't hoof ball. And uh, they're playing very well and, and exposing the city back line. And that is a little bit of the gap in talent on display, Neil, really. On the 26th minute here of the match, a level at one. Neil Roll, John Krieger with you. Happy to have you along on Fox Sports Detroit for the first time ever. Here comes FC St. Pauli again. Ball played out wide to the left. Bubala, the cross. Nobody on the other end for FC St. Pauli. City coming forward. They're going to want to shift the field a bit. It's been one-way traffic for most of the last five minutes. Really, most of the last ten minutes of action. But again, John, we've seen this time and time again from Detroit City FC. They're not to be slept on. Very capable of mounting a quick counter attack. No, it's still a 1-1 game, Neil, and counters can happen at any moment. And when they happen most often is when in midfield, you have a lazy pass that allows some space on the ball and City has very pacey midfielders that can jump on that and move forward. And especially the outer wings of that 4-3-3 in midfield and the three forwards, some of whom will track back and help, know to get forward and get forward in a hurry to try to create odds-on numbers on a counterattack situation. Busady tosses that one back in towards the middle of play. Very humid here this afternoon. Thankfully, the rain has held off. It was raining pretty good about 10 minutes before the opening kick. Long pass sent ahead, settled down, sliding across the six. This Steinwasher to make the grab and avert the FC St. Pauli attack. But John, as you said, these attacks occurring a little more frequently here in the 27th, moving into the 28th minute. Yeah, and a couple of those attacks are happening because, again, the city back line is not staying together all the way across from top to bottom of the pitch. The next nine minutes of play are brought to you by Henry Ford Health System, the official team physicians of Detroit City. FC. Now we have another guest up here in the booth. Very special guest, a guy who's very much vested in this matchup. He's a technical director for FC St. Pauli. Evald Lienen joining us. Evald, we appreciate you taking some time. How are you, my friend? Thanks a lot. Uh, hi. 
So give me your first impression here of 27 minutes plus at historic Keyworth Stadium. Not necessarily just on the pitch, but just this whole environment. Well, I'm totally impressed because uh, if, if I see um, if I see the supporters of uh, Detroit City. Uh, oh, what a goal. As FC St. Pauli <laughs> strikes on the corner. That's a beautiful goal from Samuel St. Pauli. So what Lee a strike. with the goal. Uh, no, Lee. <clears throat> Lee scored. It's a young guy from the second team coming up. So we are deeply impressed about uh, everything that's going on here. It's a, it's a um, uh, club founded uh, from, uh, from uh, the owners to, to support the community, to bring people together from, from different countries, from different uh, 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 parts of the society. And uh, what I've seen around this game also yesterday, how they welcomed us, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, was, uh, it, was really, uh, it was really amazing. It was really, uh, really amazing to uh, to see um, how many uh, well, how many supporters uh, uh, come here to uh, to support the team and to live around uh, uh, the game. It's not right. just the game; it's it's everything that's happening. And it's uh, for me, uh, my impression is like in our club that for the supporters, this club is a home where they feel comfortable, where they can support each other, where they can make more things than just support a team to win a game. Right, and, and you talk about that bringing up the whole aspect uh, of the home, and, and you guys have one of the largest female fan bases in all in all of soccer. Really, in, in all of soccer across the world. But that but that speaks to it though. When, when you talk about a home, you talk about the inclusion that both fan bases stand for. You talk about all of that stuff. It is. It is more than that. The 90 minutes on the field. That's that's the shortest part of the day, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, sometimes we have to be careful that we that we keep being a professional football club because there's so much <laughs> life around ecological projects, social projects, uh, political projects, uh, and the supporters. Uh, our club is fan-based, and out of our supporters, a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, uh, initiatives uh, came and, and come all the, all the time, and. Uh, um, so the, the concentration in this club sometimes is not only on, on, on football, but our supporters at the same uh, at the same time want uh, uh, want of course uh, uh, our team to come back to first league, and uh, so we have to to, to cope with that uh, and uh, and try to uh, to achieve this also. So let's talk about the team on the pitch because you were for a moment there down in a very worrying position, down in perhaps the uh, playoff place for the uh, relegation playoff, but you finished the season strong, finished 12th in the table, and you brought a squad here in Detroit that has, as you said, a couple of players that have come from the youth teams that are trying to make their mark. It is really one final attempt as you have some players in contract years to put a showing in front of you and in front of the staff and uh, and get a good start heading into 2018, 2019. Well, it's uh, um, the point is that we have four or five uh, basic players injured that, that couldn't come uh, with us. Uh, uh, additionally, two players long time injured who um, nearly didn't take part the whole season. And then we have two other players or three other players like uh, Assis Bouadouz, uh, the center forward from Morocco, uh, Cenk Sahin from Turkey and Müller Daly from, uh, from Norwegian national team. That uh, uh, Well, Müller Daly goes back to Freiburg, but the others, uh, one is injured and uh, Bouadouz uh, maybe gets a chance to, uh, to compete in the World Cup. So they're also not here. Uh, so. So what we have here, what you see here, is uh, five, six players who, who, who can play, who normally play in the, uh, in the basic team, but the rest are young guys uh, coming up from the second team with good uh, perspective, but, well, not the level that, uh, that we used to, uh, used to have uh, uh, to be, uh, to be uh, really a, a good team. For example, like this young Mark Schneider, who is just attacking uh, Maurice Litka, he is, he, who has the ball now there, maybe he will go to a third league team. Uh, to to catch uh, regular uh, practice um, to to develop all these young Lee, for example, they, these are good players, but they are not yet. Uh, uh, Stepping through yeah. and putting one inside the left post. Yeah, this is Alondi what was again. missing. This is what was missing <laughs> throughout <laughs> the season. <laughs> I mean, the uh, uh, the Detroit City F uh, uh, defense 
maybe it doesn't have the same strength that we have to face in, in the second league. But this was the problem of the team, that not uh, uh, neither uh, Sami nor uh, Assis from uh, Morocco were able to score. They scored four goals each the whole season. And like this, uh, we didn't get so many goals against us. But if you don't score goals, you, uh, and with this league that we had this year in Germany, in second league, totally equal, that with two, three victories, uh, you are uh, uh, you can attack the first three uh, places for first league, and with two three defeats, you you were You're down. Uh, you could rele be relegated. So that was missing the whole uh, season, unfortunately. Well, you found it there. That was a beautiful delay on the ball to let the defender go past. Beautiful goal. And we've seen some very good attacking play, uh, and hopefully that carries over for you. He is a technical director for FC St. Pauli. Eva Lienen, we appreciate you taking some time. Thank you very much for coming over here, thanks agreeing to this match and playing, and thanks for coming up here in the booth. It's been thanks. a pleasure. Thanks a lot. All yes, right. It's been a pleasure. Eva Lienen, technical director for FC St. Pauli, here joining us on Fox Sports Detroit. And he may want to stay up here the, the rest of the match, the way it's gone for his side since he, uh, since he came up here. He's enjoyed the run of play during his time. In the booth, now Detroit City FC certainly with their work cut out for them here in the 34th minute, Mr. Krieger. And you know, that look, the difference is, Neil, you see that, the, the technical skill on the ball. The, the fact of the matter is, Detroit City is a professional club, you know, everywhere but the division they play in, but they are playing with some younger kids uh, that, that play in college programs, and they're getting an education tonight because on both goals, you had the presence of mind with the attackers to stay, to delay, to create the space, and then take the calm, cool, easy shot afterward. Sometimes you rush a shot, you allow, and you allow your defender to close you down, then the play goes the other way. But in both cases for St. Pauli, heads up enough and a good enough touch to keep the ball in that kind of one foot radius around your boot. You keep it, you delay with the ball, and you just stroke it home. Certainly does jump out at you the composure that these two Bundesliga League professionals do have. And you're talking about the prime real estate of the pitch too, inside the 18, even on the six line as well. Just the confidence in, in John, really, you have to be one of the best in the world to, to be able to pull off those moves that they are doing. Uh, again, just to be able to wait, because as you talked about, the tendency is to hurry. That causes mistakes, but they are very composed in their finishes here, 30, five minutes into this match. And the third goal the finished by Alagi. Just, he's, remember this is a man who's a full Tunisian international. Tunisia, you know, making waves in their confederation. And this is a man that has played for that program. You don't play for an international team and try to qualify for international tournaments. You know, like by, the World Cup and yeah, stuff? Yeah, by being hesitant on the ball. <laughs> right. You just have to, you have to be able to have your head on the swivel and read the play. And that's exactly what he did. Put his head on the swivel, saw the defenders coming in on the replay. He had players trying to step in front. He kept the ball, kept his powder dry, and just was able to create space for himself. Sometimes attackers, when they get in that six-yard box, they're so afraid that someone is going to close them down that they'll rush things, and they'll think they have less time. Kind of like if, you know, if you're watching soccer for the first time tonight, think about a, a wide receiver thinking that a cornerback is going to close on him, hearing the footsteps a little bit. Well, Algi didn't hear the footsteps. He knew there were no footsteps. He had control. And that's what we've seen from the attack that has really picked apart a city back line that has struggled to stay and keep its shape. And of course, as we like to do during our broadcast from time to time, we'll take some tweets, read them on the air with the hashtag WatchCity. Some dude tweets at us as the Tetris looks beautiful. I'm so proud of all you crazy lunatics of Northern Guard with the hashtag WatchCity. They are feeling it here tonight. Everybody's feeling it. This is a celebration of soccer in America. Great fan bases on both sides. I think it's a celebration of soccer worldwide, really. Neil. The next nine minutes of play are brought to you by Lyft, the official rideshare partner of DCFC. Be one of the first 500 supporters to ride Lyft to the next match, and you will get a $5 off with your ride code. DCFC bus, or excuse me, DCFC C bus for the upcoming matchup against Columbus on Friday night. All you got to do, hit your Lyft app, get five bucks off with the code DCFC C bus. Of course, have to mention that as well, the new kit sponsorship this season, which is historic for DCFC with Lyft, as you see the 
the Rouge jerseys out there with that Lyft logo on the chest. Certainly a big appreciation for everything that Lyft has done for the Detroit City FC brand as well. Really, John, when you think about it, Lyft, the emerging player in the rideshare world, Detroit City FC, one of the emerging players in the Detroit sports world as well. It's a perfect matchup. It absolutely is. We were talking with executives from Lyft uh, during one of the friendlies here against Harpo's FC, and they said that they wanted to be a part of City's culture because they, they are community-based ride-sharing service and, uh, and ride service as well. And so they felt it was important to be a part of a, a club that was there for a community and didn't embrace things corporate. And that's why City became the first jersey sponsorship in Lyft's history. So now a couple of substitutions coming in. Do you know that guy? Just came into the match. Certain guy that's been a captain in the past. Dave Edwardson into the match here today, coming back from injury. This was not expected. No, this is, and uh, to be honest, he wasn't on the, the roster that we were given before the match. But when you're Dave Edwardson and you're you someone. You can play that, when you want to play. Absolutely. When you've grown up with the game, and this is, by the way, if you're getting to know City and you're getting to know Dave, this is someone from the tune from Newcastle, England, that has given his heart and soul as a club captain when he's been able to be here with Detroit City and came back, was battling fitness issues, but he promised supporters at Soccer Prom, the annual kickoff to the season, that he was going to try to get his boots back on, and he stayed with the club in training and been a mentor to some of the younger lads to introduce them to the city culture and, and Ben Pierman saying, you know what, you're fit enough to have a run out out there. Go out there, you've earned this. You get a chance to play against this side. It's a great moment for Dave. Long ball sent across the field on the left side. George Chamakoff settles it down. Chamakoff with the touch. Edwardson went to the top of the D. It was taken away. Now Ogwe looking to counter. Look at him run on the ball. He's Watch this couple. step over. He's got a couple already. Now he sends it down. More of that composure. Left foot shot rings off the crossbar. That shot is blocked by Tyler Stevens. Tyler sacrificing the body. That one hurts, I promise. That was at close range and with pace. And Tyler put the hands behind him to avoid the handball and took his medicine. And there's Dave Edwardson. That was a flurry of activity for FC St. Pauli. Lost in all that, by the way. Augie with a silky touch. Right. He's been a man of many silky touches here in the first 40 minutes plus. Make sure you stick around at halftime. Our sideline reporter, Lindsey Pearson, will get the thoughts of DCFC head coach Ben Pierman. Corner sent in, punched out. And popped high in the air back towards midfield. The technical advisor for Detroit City FC, Klaus DeBoer, the associate head coach, is Kale Wasserman of DCFC. Assistant coach and director of player development, Jordan Andrews. Director of goalkeeping, Brett Mullen. And the man with one of the better beards in the beard game today, assistant coach Josh Rogers. You know, that coaching staff has been together for a long while. They have. And that shows in the product on the pitch when DCFC is playing in the NPSL because the training regimen is unquestioned. The system is something players are familiar with that have come back for multiple seasons. And the coaches know each other and how to play off of each other and do what's best for the team. Speaking of Ben Pierman, this is a guy that's been in the coaching ranks for 10 years since he hung up his playing boots as a three-year starter at Michigan State. He's currently taking his U.S. Soccer A license course as he tries to move up in the coaching ranks. And this is a guy, don't forget, that has caused some professional sides to quake in their boots as the manager of Detroit City FC. Took Louisville to extra time in the U.S. Open Cup. Took FC Cincinnati to extra time in the U.S. Open Cup and set up his teams to do well when on paper they weren't supposed to be able to compete, and that's because Ben Pierman knows his stuff. That's why he's been on Damon Rensing's staff at Michigan State, and that's why he returns for year number five here on the city touchline. And of course, it'll just be a matter of time. Maybe some athletic director is gonna look like a real genius coming up very soon if he decides to take the next step in college soccer, bring Ben Pierman on board. Easy, easy pick, easy hire. Here's Detroit City FC now with the attack on the left side. 
That foul, much, much to some amazement, will go against DCFC. It's the first time we've heard some dissent from our supporters tonight. Uh, they've been busy celebrating here all day long. Of course, the pre-match meetup over at the Folding Warehouse where they do the march to Keyworth. All the festivities, as Sean Mann talked about, started last night. I mean, people were, they were out on the town, man. There was a vibe, and there's still a vibe. Neil, the Northern Guard has a chant that goes, I will sing for you the city till you finish the fight. Gonna be a party in Detroit, no one's sleeping tonight. I guarantee you, since St. Pauli arrived a couple of nights ago, there has been no sleeping in Detroit. Boy, Dave Evertson will be hit with a yellow card. And the Northern Guard, uh, needless to say, they're not happy about that. <laughs> not often you see a booking like that in an international friendly. I would like to see that again. And here we have a look. Edwardson in. Interesting decision. I am further away from the play than our referee in yellow today, but the same poly player went to ground and had studs up and somehow Dave Edwardson ends up with the booking. Unless there's a better look out there, that's a interesting decision, Neil. Alagui with the restart. He certainly has been the star of this show here tonight. It's a right foot in. It's flicked on, but it will scoot harmlessly across the goal line. He was, trying to send, he was trying to send that across to Brian Coughlin. Coughlin, rather. And Coughlin got muscled off the ball, and that's why it squirted through. But if Coglin had been able to chest that up and control it and turn, there were players on both wings making runs. So Steinwasher to send it down the pitch. Volleyed about over the midfield stripe. Zirais will settle it down and now making a run is Brogan Shrimpton. Shrimpton will pressure Hervagen. Shrimpton out there, nice pressure on the ball. He's someone you might not have heard of if you followed local soccer. Roddy Green sends a tracing right-footed blast on frame. Hervagen catches it with little difficulty. Saw it all the way. Yep. That, that kind of shot's either got to have some bend to it or be screened, and neither happened. But Shrimpton comes out of Davenport University, and he's called by some the best offensive player in the GLIAC during his time at Davenport. He can make an impact for City this summer. And by some, you mean the people that do the voting for Offensive Player of the Year. He had 19 goals. The whistle sounds, and the first 45 minutes of play are done here at Historic Keyword Stadium. Very entertaining first half of the match. 3-1, to one, FC St. Pauli has the lead. When we come back, we'll have some halftime festivities for you. We're here at historic Kiewer Stadium. FC St. Pauli leads it 3-1. We'll be right back. FC St. Pauli has the lead over Detroit City FC. DCFC took the lead to begin, but FC St. Pauli, the professional German side, came back strong. Our sideline reporter, Lindsay Pearson, standing by with head coach Ben Pierman. Lindsay. Coach, this isn't your first international friendly here, but it's arguably the toughest opponent you've faced. Um, what does it say about the club that they're able to attract such a high-level team? Yeah, obviously, you know, this is a pretty epic event, so we're, we're excited to be here. Um, you know, our performance was way off, but we had a big cup game midweek. We rotated eight or nine guys, and I think we learned that, um, you know, guys have to show up to play. We, we got out to a pretty fortunate start and then responded terribly. So they're a big club, huge club in Europe. They do a great job in Germany, um, and they're taking it to us right now. How does this experience benefit your players? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is, is it shows that, you know, they need to play better. They need to develop. We're going to make 11 subs at halftime. Hopefully they play better with more of a first group, but... It, it really shouldn't matter who we put out on the field. Our effort's got to be a little bit better. But obviously, anytime you get to play against seasoned professionals, high-level, big club, um, they've come over from Europe. They, they're, they're taking it to us. We're learning a few things. So um, you know, we need to start responding a little better. 
And there's a lot of meaning behind this match, but from a soccer standpoint, what are you looking for from your team in the second half? Well, we got to play a little bit better soccer. We looked disjointed there. Um, we knew there'd be a little bit of a hangover from the cup game on Wednesday, but we don't look on the same page, whether that's trying to build out of the back, whether it's trying to play through their lines, getting in behind. Um, we just have to execute things better. We're going to make those subs like I referenced. So, you know, I think the biggest thing is just getting on the same page, playing a little bit better soccer, playing a little bit more fluidly, and just a better cohesive unit. And what, is Detroit, what makes Detroit City FC so special for new viewers who are just watching us for the first time? I mean, obviously our supporters. I, I, you know, I think they're, they are the best in the country, the best in the world. We, we can't say that enough about them. So that's definitely what separates them. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Thank you very much, Lindsay. Appreciate that. The thoughts from head coach Ben Pierman through the first 45 minutes of play. FC St. Pauli with a 3-1 lead over DC FC. So we'll take another halftime break when we come back. More from historic Kiewer Stadium. 3-1, FC St. Pauli has the lead. This is Detroit City FC Soccer on Fox Sports Detroit. Back inside Kiewer Stadium here at the half. FC St. Pauli with a 3-1 lead. Detroit City FC did get the jump on the second division Bundesliga squad here today. Trevor Aman coming out, getting the goal for DC FC. But then FC St. Pauli really turned it on after falling behind by the score of 1-0. And Mr. John Krieger, we saw early on the power of FC St. Pauli, but Detroit City FC snuck one in to get the party started. A great start by George Shamakov and a great job by Amon to follow his shot. He gets to go over and celebrate with some supporters who welcome him in. But again, composure is the word that we keep using here today. And that guy, Sammy Alagui, has been the most composed of them all. A couple of goals, and he's been dangerous in other aspects as well. And great on set pieces, great with service as well. And his ability to pause and keep control of the ball and thus keep control of the play has really been the turning point and the telling story of this game. Both of his goals made defenders look silly. Watch that little move. One, two, done. That is absolutely incredible. I mean, there's just not much else to say other than that. Sammy Alagui. The Tunisian national who has scored goals at the highest levels of the game, doing that here again as well. Of course, the halftime show brought to you by Henry Ford. And you heard the remarks from head coach Ben Pierman. Here's the resume of the lead man in charge of La Rouge. And we talked a little bit about it earlier, but how about that record, Mr. John Krieger? 40 wins, as many draws as losses. The numbers tell the story. And you know what's special about that win-loss record, Neil? how tough it is to coach and have a consistent squad in the NPSL. If you haven't followed lower division soccer in the United States, guys are moving in and out all the time. Sometimes they have to go to work. Nate Steinwasher spent the day before a cup game doing tax audits in a, in a place in Cincinnati. This isn't a professional gig for these players. They're trying to get noticed, and so Ben Pierman sometimes has different squads because of it. And he still, take a look at that win percentage, picks up at least a point in 53 of 66 matches that he's been on the touchline for. It's a great, great feather in his cap to have that kind of success for LaRouge. We'll take our final halftime break. When we come back, the second 45 minutes of play, FC St. Pauli with a 3-1 lead. We'll be right back. This is Detroit City FC Soccer on Fox Sports Detroit. Welcome back to Keyworth Stadium. 3-1 FC St. Pauli in the lead through 45 minutes of play. Neil Rule, John Krieger back with you. And John, it was interesting again going back to Ben Pierman's conversation with our sideline reporter Lindsey Pearson at the half. And the repetitive theme throughout everybody we've talked to in the shots you see on your screen right now, it's a celebration. Uh, crack the adult beverages. Everybody have fun. Let off the smoke bombs, everything like that. We're having a good time up here in the booth. We're chopping it up with the crew and everything like that. Lindsey Pearson's having a great time. One man said he's not having a good time, and that one man is Ben Pierman. No, not at all, Ben Pierman. We, <laughs> we need to play better. I don't care if this is a two Bundesliga side. I don't care if I'm going to make 11 changes at halftime. we got to play better. And that's because Ben Pierman knows this is his last friendly. 
the next time you play, you've already lost one match in the league to AFC Ann Arbor on a stoppage time goal that really an unkind bounce, and he wants to win. And we showed you his record, and that's why. And I guarantee you, when he went back into the dressing room at halftime, Ben Pierman wasn't focusing about, well, you guys had a great counter, and we led 1-0, and wasn't it nice to have the two Bundesliga side back on their heels? It was going in and talking about closing down defenders and not creating five holes for, for Oligi to step through and being able to be tighter on the ball and, and shut down the wings. And when you sit there and Lindsay, I, I fell for Lindsay Pearson a little bit because you could see Ben Pierman is treating this like the clinical evaluation that friendlies are supposed to be. And he's going in there saying he wants more. You're going to see 11 different city players in the second half, but this is a legitimate evaluation. I don't care who the side is you're playing against for the fact that they're professional. Pierman's here to win. <laughs> look at that look on his face. That is not a man. <laughs> that That is not a man that is having a celebratory kind of day. That is the kind of man that needs to see something a little bit better. You know, I saw that kind of scowl on faces in leagues a lot higher up than the NPSL. But that's why Ben Pierman is as good as he is, because he wants to win. I think if, I've seen him smile on the touchline once after Tyrone Mundy won the region championship last year and DCFC was headed to the regional semifinals. But Ben Pierman's all business, and you saw that on the touchline. The first nine minutes here of the second half are brought to you by Fago, the official pop of Detroit City FC. Rock and Rye friendly booth right here, everybody. There's no question about that. Just about ready to rock here for the second 45 minutes of action. And we are underway, and that leads us to our weekly trivia presented by Fago. This week's question, how many teams are in the NPSL? Of course, the league that Detroit City FC competes in. We'll give you a couple minutes to marinate on that. We'll come back with the answer. As Detroit City FC now with the possession. We've had some wholesale changes across the board, and we will get to them here in just a few moments. But again, this is a much different looking Detroit City FC 11 than we saw in the first half. And John, really the one that jumps out at me, I look out there up top. It really starts with Sean Lawson, the former Oakland Golden Grizzly standout. He's a guy that's been on a goal scoring tear to start this NPSL season for Detroit City FC. And he, had, he was the man that finished that beautiful counter against FC Cincinnati. He's got a nose for goal and immediately there City has to clear their back line, but Sean Lawson coming out of Oakland and that great program up there in Rochester that I know you know very well, but he comes in and over the last two years of spending the summer here in Detroit, Sean Lawson has learned from Ben Pierman and he has honed that touch around goal and he is a clinical, clinical finisher. He will test the FC St. Pauli back line if some service can come into him, but the thing I like most about his game, he's unafraid to come back and do the hard yards all the way back in midfield as well to help out his teammates. Substitution in goal as well for Detroit City FC. Fernando Pena getting the call here in the second 45 minutes. Now, this is a guy, John, we were talking about high-level players for Detroit City. Played for the U.S. national team, the U-17 squad back in 2011. Gave up just two goals in seven matches during his time there. Played some college soccer at Akron. 14-3-1 with a very tasty 0-6-2 goals against average. I mean, this is a guy that can flat out play the game at its highest levels. He is so, so good. He controls his box. He knows when to come off his line. He's got a good punch and a good catch, and his defenders in front of him trust him. They can be more aggressive and close down defenders because Fernando Pina on the back end has the gloves to tip things over the bar. He's a big presence between the sticks. Speaking of substitutions, one standing over the ball right now for FC St. Pauli, number 20, Richard Newdecker into the game. Four goals in 28 matches for FC St. Pauli. He had a goal in three appearances for the German national U19 team back in 2014. There's a left-footed shot that goes just wide of the right post. But John, early on, FC St. Pauli picking up where they left off. Now well, they're going to come. They're going to come right at you. They are very good on the wings, and they will come in and provide service. You take a look at number 31, Maurice Litka, and Litka came in and fizzed it right at Pina. And FC St. Pauli, look at how aggressive they are on the ball. Look there, number 19, Lucas Zander. Zander right up against in the NPSL. A play into midfield like that. 
the City player is going to have a second or two, a beat or two, because the player he's playing against doesn't want to make the mistake. Xander's confident enough in his game that when the ball comes to the player he's marking, he's going to be up there and create a lack of space that forces a mistake out of the man he's trying to strip and dispossess. We saw the challenge just now for Detroit City FC. Number 49, Wilfred Williams. We're talking about Oakland Golden Grizzly. That's another former Oakland Golden Grizzly, a fourth-round pick of Sporting KC in the MLS. Good pedigree as well, the U14 and U15 USA men's national team member as well. What a one-two. Back to Xander now sends it in. That was beautiful one-two play between Litka and Xander all the way up the wing. Brian Koglin. The young buck out there, just 21 years old. That was an interesting question. You asked Eva Lienen, the technical director for FC St. Pauli. Bottom line, you said you got some young bucks out there. And this is the pros. They're playing to eat. Like these guys that are here, you talked about celebration, and Ben Pierman's not feeling the celebration. Those guys aren't either. They're playing to eat. They're playing for contracts. They're playing for money. You bet. Listen, sometimes you have a team at the end of a season that goes on a tour. It's kind of a paid holiday. You see some of the Premier League sides go over to Asia and some of the places after a season. They're going to go to the beach, and then they're going to go play for 90 minutes, and they're done. You take a look at FC St. Pauli. You have a prodigious youth system with, F with FC St. Pauli, too. you got a lot of guys on the squad list that have represented Germany at the U17, U18, U19, U20 levels. And the wheat will be separated from the chaff. And if you take a look at some of their contract situations, as that ball's fizzed in and Pena is able to make the save, some of them are in contract years. And you're getting ready with the transfer window opening a little earlier and in a World Cup year, you've got a situation where you're going to have to look to see either where you're going to be loaned or where you're going to stay. So you're seeing a lot of guys out there on trials tonight. Speaking of big time players, there's one making a run in Josh Gatt, who spent last year with the Colorado Rapids. He played with the U.S. men's national team as well. Two matches, as a matter of fact, made his debut against Russia back in 2012. Played his high school soccer in the area at Detroit Catholic Central. Josh Gatt, as good as it gets, folks. This is a high-level player. I know we've been talking up a lot of these guys, but Josh Gatt, I'm intrigued to see this guy. Now, of course, he suffered uh, the big-time knee injury trying to work his way back. You have to salute this guy. And sometimes you just need to get reps, and that's the case with Josh Gatt. He comes in, 11 starts, 20 appearances. He had two goals and three assists. He's also played European football as well, played with Molde in Norway and also SC Reindorf Altak in Austria. 15 goals and 15 assists in 75 European appearances. He's played all over the globe and seasoned his game. He'll be a veteran presence for City. Here is Cyrus Sadie. Sending the ball out wide for Wilford Williams. Williams trying to go to work. So that was taken away. We like to apologize for some of the language you, you may have heard coming across the crowd. Mike, say, hey, live TV, guys. We, we, certainly, we certainly are apologetic, though. Passions are... Passions are running high, high. man. We talked about it. And sometimes passion breeds color. And so now you have... City coming in here in midfield. That's a nice job to force pressure off the ball. And look at the step in there. That's the thing I love about the way some of Ben Pierman's players play. They'll come in and they pick up their teammates. That was an excellent step in by Williams. And he's a forward, remember. He's back on the halfway line stepping in, being involved in the play. He's not a fox in the box. He knows in Ben Pierman's 4-3-3, he's got to come back and do the hard yards, and he does. There is the Northern Guard. We talked about it, emotions running high. It doesn't matter if it's a second division Bundesliga team, an MPSL team, a charity match. 11 kids playing out on the field in a high school game, doesn't matter for them. Emotions are always running high. You know what though, with those emotions and with the passion comes- A lot of good. And the, really the soul of this club. You know, you, you see colors and flags and some people say, well, you know what, it's about it's about pop and smoke on the pitch. Well, no, it's about a lot of good they do in the community as well. That shot will be sent home off the right post. So a goal for FC St. Pauli. And I think they'll credit that goal there to number 34, Sing Wong Lee, his second goal of the match. Sing Wong Lee, as you said, John, 
Slotting home his second of the match. FC St. Pauli takes a 4-1 lead. And we were talking earlier about that FC St. Pauli youth side, the U23 team. He was brought up here, a late addition to the roster, a late addition to this trip. He's uh, he's turning some heads right now, there's no doubt about it. Well, his first goal was a beautiful bit of control off of a set piece that he turned and fired home from the top of the D. And that time, he just comes in and it's a clinical finish. Gets some help from the post, but it was a good strike. Placement past Pena, nothing the city's keepers could do. Josh Gabb with the move. And his shot trickles wide. Let's get you the answer to our weekly trivia question presented by Fago as we take another look. That ball actually looked like it might have been deflected out in front of the six, but we'll get you the answer to the trivia question nonetheless. How many teams are in the NPSL? The answer, if you had 98, you are correct. Of course, the NPSL stretching across America from sea to shining sea. That ball will be played out. That one ran off of Litka's boot a little bit. I think he wanted to turn quicker and it ran away from him on the artificial surface. But Xander right back at it. A lot of space on the wings right now and look at Lee and that's a heads up turn to the middle of the pitch. Now St. Pauli can do whatever they need to with it and that's good service. Wilfred Williams will play that away. The next nine minutes of play are brought to you by Level One Bank. At every home match, Level One hosts a different small business in the new DCFC Level One VIP section. A big welcome today to our companies from EVN Inc. They're today's small business champion of the match. And they're kicking it over there in the Level One VIP section. Quietly in this second half, I think Ben Pierman will be very impressed with Rafael Mensingen, who's come on at halftime. Very pacey player in midfield for City. He can run at people, scored a wonder goal that was against Drake uh, University that was uh, went viral, really, in Mensingen coming out of Valparaiso University and that Missouri Valley. A pretty good player coming into City for the first season this year. Josh Gap plays it back. Sending it down is Jimmy Fiscus. Of course, Fiscus playing with the cast on his right hand, circa Cowboy Bob Orton from late 80s wrestling. Wilford Williams with the receive and will kick it back. You know what? This is nice from City here, Neil. They're just slowing things down. Scoreline is one thing, but they need to learn Ben Pierman's system and play well in it. And Ben Pierman's system is built on possession in the league. See St. Pauli now with the possession with that 4-1 lead. Look at that physical play there, muscles the city player right off the ball. And there's a look at EVN Inc., the level one small business champion of the match. They're kicking it over there. Got the food, the beverages. Taking in the match. Here's Wilford Williams. Detroit City FC now. John really trying to put together some possession, I guess, would be the best way to term it. Yeah, we have seen a shift in this match. This is, I think, to be honest, Neil, and you never like to say that the teams don't want to try to win, but this has gone from trying to worry about the scoreboard to trying to worry about what is done on the training ground coming through to the game pitch. Because from here on out, it's league matches for Detroit City, and they're going to come thick and fast, and you're going to see opponents because of the way the schedule works out. Detroit City FC's league schedule is kind of in clusters where you're going to see opponents twice very quickly in, in quick succession, and you're going to have to be better than they are and learn from that. And so a lot of this you see the, the possession build up. FC St. Pauli would be more than happy to let that happen. They have the full one lead. But that's not what City's about right now. They're trying to make sure that what Ben Pierman does in practice is getting ready for the league season. Here comes a pass sent through, but Pena up off the line will make the grab. Let's take a look at Detroit City FC's upcoming matches. Of course, things will get rolling hot and heavy on Friday. FC Columbus will be in town, and look, we don't have to tell you. If 
you're a fan here at the Detroit area, any time any squad from Columbus rolls through, you need to come out here to Key Worth and make your feelings known. And then on Friday, June 1st, FC Indiana will be in town as well. Make sure you stop by the Folding Warehouse just down the street here in Hamtramck before you make your way to those matches. You, you owe it to yourself to do that, to get the full DCFC experience. Got to do the march with the match. It's one of the greatest traditions in Detroit sports. It's a fun bit of color going through the neighborhoods. And it's really worth noting at this point, we have to say, it's part of the example of how the city of Hamtramck within the city of Detroit has welcomed DCFC. That march has given a police escort in to make sure that it, it happens and that the marchers have fun and, and are, are escorted in and can truly represent their club. And as they walk by the houses here in Hamtramck, you'll see little kids that will be taking pictures so that they can be a part of the march of the match somewhere, somewhere down the road, all part of the traditions of Detroit City FC soccer. It's been a substitution at the goalkeeper spot as well for FC St. Pauli, Robin Himmelman. Getting the run of play here in the second half. Here's another dangerous attack. The cross sent in, played out. But possession has settled back down. He meant then actually the more veteran FC St. Pauli keeper. He started all 34 of the two Bundesliga matches for FC St. Pauli. So now, you know, if things hadn't gone from uh, the level of talent on the pitch, now you bring in your first choice keeper for the final 30 minutes. All he's done is played in 104 matches for your club, the 29-year-old veteran. Speaking of a veteran, there's one with the ball at his feet, Cyrus Sadie. Creates some space, Mensigan turns, sends it wide. Sean Lawson on the right foot. Stepping through Mensigan, that ball gets in on frame. Hemelman goes to the turf. And right there in that attack, Neil, you saw just a little bit of what Rafa can do. Stepped around the defender, kept the ball on his boot, created some space, had the option to try to leave it off to the other post, took the shot himself. Lucas Ander plays it towards the middle. Zonder made his Bundesliga debut back in 2015 versus Werder Bremen against some club named Baron Leverkusen. Gee, only, <laughs> only a Champions League side. <laughs> you know, nice, easy ramp up into things. It is amazing, the, the resumes and the names that you're talking about here with this side, FC St. Pauli. And we've been talking about it really all match long, but I did want to get into this story. How legit is FC St. Pauli? And let me put this in terms that American fans can understand. Back in 2008, Nike commemorated the club with an exclusive line of their dunk shoes. Only 500 pairs of the high tops were made. Only 150 pairs of the low tops were made. Exclusive release. And look, in America, we love a good exclusive sneaker release. I think we can all agree on that. You can hit up eBay and get a pair for about 200 bucks right now if you're so inclined. If you want your FC St. Pauli Nike dunks. That is strong to quite strong no on question. the shoe game. I know, I know Lindsey Pearson's been peeping, though. She's all about the shoe game. She likes a good, strong shoe game. Ball sent through. Beyond Mark Schneider. Settles it down, plays it out wide to the left. And again, Schneider, the it's top of the D. On the move with the shot, Pena makes the catch. It's been fun to watch the FC St. Pauli supporters tonight. Normally, it's the Northern Guard across the way, and there's one or two away fans that are coming in here in the away end. Nice to see Keyword Stadium absolutely packed out. And you talked about that limited sneaker release. Well, that's because companies knew that FC St. Pauli was going to be marketable and because they were fan-based. And you're seeing some of that thing and some of those things in some of the partnerships formed here with Detroit City FC as people around the nation and around the world realize that the fans whose pictures you see on the screen right now have poured their heart and soul into this. That ball's played in. Inside the 18, the shot was blocked, though, expertly by FC St. Pauli, as we have seen that a lot here this evening. Now Mark Schneider again scored his first professional goal on October 23rd of the season for FC St. Pauli. Mentz again drops it back. Fiscus. Santala. Sinclair.
Moyes. Wilford Williams in the left corner. Williams sends it through. Nobody on the other end. Next nine minutes of play are brought to you by Lyft. Every time you ride with Lyft, you have the option to round up your fare to the nearest dollar and donate. This season, DCFC is matching all donations on rides ending at Keyword Stadium. So make sure you hit up that Lyft app in your phone and ride on down to Keyword Stadium. Detroit City FC will match all donations made. So again, just another example of being active in the community. Detroit City FC certainly founded on that. That ball headed out by Jimmy Fiscus. You know, it's interesting tonight if viewers are tuning into Fox Sports that's right with us for the first time, and they're taking a look at this team that's in the fourth division of American soccer, Neil. Well, frankly, DCFC is a pro club in everything except for the division and league that they play in. And that's evidenced by the fact that they're playing tonight against a professional side with players that have either gone pro or are looking to. And you take a look at the impressive resume of players for Detroit City that have ended up in the professional ranks. Right now, Bakey Goodman in the Seattle Sounders picture. He's playing in Pittsburgh, I believe, at the moment. Kevin Taylor spent time with Minnesota Thunder of the USL. You have a number of players, Kofi Apari, that played as well for the DC United organization. All of that born on these pitches, and that's what you're seeing, and that's what you embrace, because those players embody the spirit of the city of Detroit. We're workmen like people. We put in our dues. We get better. We have heart. We put in a shift, and those players have, and that's why this team in the fourth division of U.S. soccer, take a look at that. All of those players got their start playing in front of these these fans. And a tremendous save made by Pena off the corner. He had to be sharp off the line. Wolford Williams clears it out. Maybe the finest save of the evening so far. Let's take another look. Pena had to be alert. That was a rocket off the volley, John. That is beautifully placed service, a nice volley, and that is what Fernando Pena can do. He frustrated a lot of NPSL players last year. Made a couple of key penalty saves, by the way, as well, during a seven match run for City that kept them in the playoff places. Here comes an attack that is finished off once again by FC St. Pauli. Boy, Demetrius Dimantakos, very dangerous out on the pitch. It's another goal, and it's 5 1 for FC St. Pauli. And again, John, just world class on the finish. Well, that's a man that's come out of the Olympiacos organization. He's featured for Greece. He played with the under-19 squad that are in second place in the 2012 UEFA European Under-19 Championship. Has a full international cap for Greece. And look at this, just turns on the, the, the afterburners, muscles his defender, doesn't allow the defender to close him down, gets the ball just far enough in front of him, Puts the boot into it, nothing Fernando Pena can do. That's a professional move, too, with that right hand, just to create that heartbeat of space. That's all you need to do. Yeah. Milan Tacos, a guy at his level, that's all he's going to need. Didn't extend the arm either. Nope. Just enough of the shoulder. I'm going to take this space here for now. Bye. And I'm gone. There's Josh Gatt. As that ball played up in the air. In the 68th minute. Here at Keyworth Stadium, ball swung out wide. Wilford Williams, I believe, was the target, but again, uh oh, look out! Laid away, and here comes a dangerous counter situation now for FC St. Pauli, as Litka played that ball up. If they had moved forward quicker, they had men on both wings and one City defender back. They chose to slow it up a little bit, and that allowed City's defense to close around the ball a little bit, and then City came through and took it away, thanks to Harvey Moyes. Marcus Kokzinski, the head coach. FC St. Pauli with a smile on his face. And why not? He likes the way things are going right now. Here comes Dimon Tacos again. Dimon Tacos hesitating, slicing through. And that ball will trickle just wide of the left post off the foot of Schneider. 
That's a beautiful cut back shot by Schneider. He was trying to do that. That's all. That's a looky loo move. I'm going to walk past you. Here's the service. Wait for it. Wait for it. Cut it back across the face of goal. And he just couldn't find the post. That's a veteran little cut shot. John, you brought it up. You were talking about maybe some of the people around town are watching for the first time here on Fox Sports Detroit. Maybe some people that have heard about DCFC that are curious, wanted to see what it, it's all about. Might not be the biggest soccer fan in the world. Describe German soccer to everyone because it, it's unique in that as here comes the situation. Right foot shot will go wide of the frame by Santala. But describe German soccer to the fans out there that might not know because each country obviously plays their own specific style of, of soccer. Germany, as the World Cup titles would attest to, very successful at it. Well, it's not a fi as physical a game as, say, English soccer, if you're, if you're familiar with watching the Premier League. It's a little more finesse-based, but, but it's also uh, very developmentally based. You see a lot of players coming out. The Stars go play for Bayern and Borussia Dortmund and some of the teams top four and five in the Bundesliga. But the rest of the German teams, there's a lot of development, a lot of youth teams. Part of that comes because of the fact that they keep things affordable and and country based. There is a prohibition against foreign ownership for German teams, and so it's kept within the country. Ticket prices are kept affordable, and emphasis is play, placed on academy football. And those academies work with the national programs so that you have kind of a symbiotic relationship all up and down the German pyramid. So you have a lot of very attractive soccer. And that's why the German football team, the German national team, is one of the favorites for World Cup 2018 in Russia on the networks of Fox, by the way. And you have a situation where you see kind of that attacking game out of the German system. You take a look at this FC St. Pauli team. Most of them, as we did our notes, we saw, took time and spent time in the German under 19, 18, 17 national team systems. And that's because that's what the German game does. It gets players early, it develops them, and it turns them into players that can play anywhere else in the world while still competing at the upper tiers with the best. Himmelman off his line to make the grab. As that ball was crossed in. Himmelman now sends it back up towards the midfield line. what I've seen from City in the last couple of minutes. There have, been, there have been a couple of cut shots, but they've been able to force FC St. Paul a little higher up, and they had some possession there, and were able to get into the attacking third. I think maybe the fitness level of FC St. Paul has been a little bit taxing for City's players tonight, even with the, the players that came on at halftime and so have only been on for about 25 minutes now. Nifty toe poke there by Sean Lawson to the middle to create some space for Menskin. Out wide. Santala. Menskin. Turn still has it. Tried to find Cyrus Sadie. Popped up in the air. At the outer edge of the 18. FC St. Pauli will clear. Long Boyes. shot from range. Royas put that one on frame. It didn't look like Hemelman was expecting that ball to do that. No, but I don't think he was expecting a shot from the halfway line either. That's a look. I've got an open goal to shoot at, and I'm on television. I'm going to have a go. <laughs> That's what that was. If he did that in an NPSL match with the more liberal substitution policies, Mr. Moyes might have had a talking to from Mr. Pierman on the touchline. And City fans, you can take your next experience at Keyword Stadium to the next level by upgrading to the DFCU Financial Lounge for complimentary food and drinks and on-field seating. Go to tickets.debtcityfc.com. Again, that's tickets.debtcityfc.com. And the next nine minutes of action are presented by the Detroit City Fieldhouse, Detroit's new indoor athletic facility opening September 2018. Leagues are now forming. That's right, you can get in the action. Check out DebtCityFC.com slash Fieldhouse for more information as we get the whistle and the stoppage as we continue to have the Watch City tweets flow flowing in, not Adrian K tweets at us. 
says we're watching at the library pub in Novi. So we appreciate everybody. Look like a packed house, packed house too. So big what up to everybody watching at the library pub in Novi. And we've had a lot of that come in on the hashtag Watch City All Night, Neil. Out in the Battle Creek area, out in Grand Rapids, all around this great state. People tuning in here on Fox Sports Detroit. And right now we have another guest up here in the booth, another one of the co-owners of Detroit City FC, Alex Wright, joins us here in the booth. Alex, you're usually up here anyway, but but welcome to this side of the booth, you know, on the left side over here where I am. It's good to be here. It's fun to, it's fun to be on this side of the camera with you guys, yeah, watching I, the future unfold in front of us. And, and how about that? Alex, and, and we just talked about it too, the, the Fieldhouse project that you guys have going on. And, and look, across the landscape, especially of American soccer, the, the youth level of the game is something that's been breached. Detroit City FC is going to be on the forefront of that in the city of Detroit. Yeah, so we've, we've focused the past few years of the club on building this team that you're watching. This game is such a great culmination of, of what, we, what we're capable of and, and the kind of draw that we have uh, internationally at this point. And what we've done now to build on that is we're building out the Detroit City uh, Fieldhouse, which is, uh, some folks might remember it as the City Sports Arena. Uh, the Red Wings practice there. Uh, it was an old tennis facility before that, but uh, it, needed a, it needed a new home, sort of like Keyworth Stadium. It needed a new purpose. And what we've done is uh, cleaned it out, and it's going to be two indoor soccer fields in downtown Detroit, the first time that's been the case in ages. Um, the most exciting... The most exciting part about that is uh, starting in September, we'll have youth and adult leagues uh, in the city of Detroit for the first time since I can remember. You know, the owners of DCFC, we've got families, and uh, we're obviously all soccer fans. and Kids, too. And yeah, and kids. kids now, brand new and kids. kids. Um, and we got to take our kids out of the city to, to play soccer, to show them this game we love. Here comes Sean Lawson inside the 18, moving, weaving the shot, and the save is made. Next attempt played out defensively, but Hamelman up to the challenge. Not many people have been against Sean Lawson as of late. Oh, here we go, another one. Wilford Williams steps through and rings one off the left post. Okay. So the former Golden Grizzlies buzzing right now here at Keyworth. I'm good luck, man. You might be stuck with me for a few minutes. <laughs> we're we're going to have you here all season long, right, Alex? <laughs> You know, Alex, getting back to what you're talking about with the Detroit City Fieldhouse, one of the things you wanted to do with the Fieldhouse was make it kind of a home base for Detroit soccer. You know, this is kind of the, the heartbeat of Detroit soccer and the community during the summer. But you've made it a 365-day-a-year initiative now. There's going to be a place uh, where supporters can gather, watch matches in other leagues, get out and play in their leagues. It is that true home base, kind of ground, ground zero in the central spot for Detroit soccer year-round. Yeah, I mean, the fact of the matter is we live in Detroit, right? Uh, summer's, what, a month and a half long? Uh, shorter this year. We need a plan B, <laughs> and that's going to be the Detroit City Fieldhouse. It's going to be the place in the city of Detroit for folks to, to watch and play indoor soccer. Um, and it's something we're extremely excited about, you know? And it Diving save made by Pena off the left foot of Litka. All right, my luck's still holding up. And, you know, and, and you know, and dovetailing into that, we're also starting to look into the youth, uh, the youth piece of things. Um, People have been asking us for a long time when we're going to start doing some DCFC youth initiatives. And for the first time, we're working with Detroit Pal and some other clubs that are going to help us put together what we envision as sort of a city of Detroit select club. Um, it's something that's been missing for too long, and it's something that we think that we're perfectly placed to do. I mean, they call soccer the beautiful game, and all you have to do is watch to know why. But, you know, we think the reason it's a beautiful game is that anyone can play it. And unfortunately, the city of Detroit has a ton of kids that deserve to be playing high-level soccer, but for whatever reason, uh, transportation issues or, or, or money, um, they can't. And what we've pledged to do is to make our club, our youth organization, the most affordable option for kids that want to play soccer uh, in the city. And that's something that's a huge part of our mission um, from the top all the way down to what's going to be a new youth club. Alex Wright joining us here in the booth on Fox Sports Detroit. Neil Rule, John Krieger with you. Detroit City FC and FC St. Pauli here, a celebration of soccer in America. And, and, I, and I do have a follow-up question to that. But when I say that to you, Detroit City FC soccer on Fox Sports Detroit, what, what, it, what goes through your mind? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, I mean, I don't know about you. When you were a kid and, and you were, like, fantasizing about the soccer team or professional team that you were going to start, 
I mean, it ended up on Fox Sports, right? Right? <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, you're, one day you'd be on TV throwing a three-piece suit, and you get to do an interview with Neil Rule and John Krieger. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, um, this isn't the beginning of anything, right? This is the this is a prog this is a process that step. started a few years ago, and um, it's not the end of anything either, right? Like it's it's a phenomenal chapter, and we keep rewriting the book on how you're supposed to do the soccer thing in the city, and. I think it just goes to show based on the, the crowd. And I mean, it's raining right now and uh, no one's going anywhere. Right, which it, it just started raining <laughs> actually pretty hard as well. But the, the follow up question I had when, when you talked about the field house that you guys are building in the youth leagues and everything like that, it really makes me think about how Keyworth came to be and, and what you guys had to do. This place was essentially crowdfunded by your supporters, uh, more or less. I mean, that's kind of the the basic math understanding of it. More or less crowdfunded by your supporters, you're paying them back. Mm -hmm. Nobody does that, Alex. Well, look, you know, if you're a Detroiter, uh, you spend a lot of your time when you're outside driving past buildings that kind of force you to imagine a past that maybe you'd heard about from your folks or your grandparents. Um, myself and my partners are the kind of guys who, you know, when we drive past these buildings, we kind of get sick of, of just thinking about, hearing about what they were. And uh, we want to help them be something more, uh, help them become something new for the next generation. Keyword Stadium is a perfect example. Uh, it's over 80 years old, and it's the, it's the heartbeat of the city of Hamtramck. I mean, you come here any day of the week in the summer, there's 200 kids playing soccer. Um, unfortunately, it was in disrepair. Um, and we believe that when you've got a gem like this, uh, you don't turn your back on it. You figure out a way to leverage your relationships, and you, you fix it up. And uh, we're getting there, you know? Uh, it's not stopping St. Pauli from coming, right? Like, we got a long way to go, but right. this place was condemned a few years ago. And now it's not only home for DCFC. Santala with the touch, and another <laughs> big time save is made by Emo Man. <laughs> well, City is testing the first choice keeper for FC St. Pauli, and he's been up to the test. And look at this touch. Wait for it, Rafa. Oh. Oh. So that's, close. That's just that's just a 29-year-old veteran that's played in the second division Bundesliga making that save. I mean, now you, you shake your head. I mean, what are, you, what are you supposed to do? Guy's got over 100 caps. For <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, a, uh, this, is, this is really exciting to watch. You know what? Uh, St. Paul is quite a club. It's interesting to follow up on Keyworth, and it's another thing that the club made the choice to do, Alex, because when you crowdfunded Keyworth and you built it up, you, had, you could have had the option to try to – be normal and bland and do what every other stadiums in the country has done with six dollar hot dogs and and you know a, a box of popcorn but we look out at some of the things that you've done in with the small business spotlights and the dc dfcu lounge and food trucks that are here you've even kept the fan experience local based and bringing detroit businesses inside the gates to bring the heart of hamtramck with some of those companies and some of the the fun food trucks from around detroit it truly is a small slice of the renaissance of this city yeah, I mean, this is the best sports town in America. You can't show up and be bland. And you haven't been. And you come <laughs> in here, and, and it's a great match day. The next nine minutes of play are presented by Rip It Energy, the official energy drink of Detroit City FC. Alex Wright, one of DCFC's co-owners here in the booth. Alex, we certainly do appreciate you carving out some time. You've been running around not only today, not only yesterday, but for six years now, and we certainly do appreciate it. Going back to what you said, congratulations on all this. But this isn't the end. This is this is just the next step, right? And, and the way we look at it, this isn't congratulations we deserve. This is congratulations the soccer community in Michigan deserves. We're just throwing the party. Everyone else here is the one that's responsible for it. And they're living it up right now over there across the way in the Northern Guard section. Alex, appreciate the time. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. All right, Alex Wright, one of the co-owners here of Detroit City FC. We're 82 minutes and change into this matchup. And historic Keyword Stadium, Neil Rule, John Krieger with you. Lindsey Pearson, our sideline reporter. Happy to have you along as we are getting close, John, to that 85th minute. And if you're watching at home right now, make sure you stick around. Something pretty cool is about to go down. And we see some of that starting now. The Northern Guard lights up the flares. From the flares come the smoke. And if the wind is blowing the right way, it can be mighty hard to see the ball. It's blowing the smoke out of the stadium right now, but the Northern Guard truly gives their team a send-off in style. Corner kick up coming for Detroit City FC. Ball sent inside the 18. It's headed over top of the frame. 
So a dangerous chance for Detroit City. Out through the middle, Newdecker touches it up. Pass sent wide on the right side. Luka Zonder on the move. Zonder inside the 18. All played out Mentz again. The first team all Missouri Valley performer at Valparaiso earns the foul call. Menzing and showing off some of the pace that he has and City just trying to play out the the string here and show Ben Pierman a little more before he makes decisions heading into league play. And a great crowd here today, Neil, as well at Keyworth Stadium. I don't think I've ever seen the supporter side so full. Uh, absolutely, as that ball trickles in, Fernando Pena will turn it around. Final few moments of the match here today. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a celebration of the game. It's been a celebration of the city. And certainly myself as a lifelong Detroiter, as are you, John. Certainly proud to be a small part of it here with everybody that's been watching on Fox Sports Detroit. It's been a blast, no doubt about it. Here comes Detroit City now. Stepping through, Mance again on the move. Mance again finds the back of the net with the right foot. Second goal of the evening for DCFC. Oh, Rafa, si, senor. Nice move. Nice job to create space. And I don't care if you are a first choice Bundesliga two keeper. You have someone standing in open space in front of the goal. You are at his mercy. And Mensingen, with his pace, created that space, got lovely service in, and made the most of it. Watch out for Rafa Mensingen this season for DCFC. Certainly do have to like what you've seen from him so far. Look at that jersey, folks, as we take another look at it. Look at that silky ball in. Wait, gone. One touch, one shot, touch. And goal. Boys. Didn't waste time over the ball. One touch, position, strike through, 5-2. As the smoke pours out of the northern guard section. A different array of colors. Just a lot of fun here. Here's Sean Lawson with it on the far right side. Back towards the middle. Cyrus Sadie, look out for him in space. Steps in with a left foot and it skips across the turf. But Hemelman will make the grab. And we've been talking about the number of folks in the building here tonight. We've just been told it is an official sellout. Tonight's attendance brought to you by Ripid Energy, 7,264. A sellout here at historic Kiewer Stadium. And Mr. John Krieger, that says it all. The game of soccer is alive and well in the city of Detroit. Thank you very much. And this is for a friendly. It may be against a German team, but remember, this is a sold out stadium. And the last time DCFC sold one out was for a national semifinal. And I think I'm safe in saying that if we had to pick a Detroit sports franchise that was closest to winning a championship, it's the one you're watching right now on Fox Sports Detroit because this is not a team in rebuild. This is a team that Ben Pierman thinks can win and a lot of people have come in and are supporting. And by the way, if you're watching this tonight, you weren't down with us at Keyworth, there is room for you. DebtCityFC.com. That's the website where you can buy tickets. Home fixtures coming up on May 25th and June 1st. That ball pinballs around inside the box, and it'll be a goal for FC St. Pauli. That's just unlucky. I believe Luca Zonder was the one that put the shot towards the frame. And that thing, boy, it did pinball around. That is the unkindest bounce of all, because Fernando Pino was in a good position to collect. And all of a sudden, whoops, it goes the other way. Here it is. Look at Pina. Positioning good. There. Wait. Gone. Own goal. 
Not much can be done as Fernando Pena punches the turf in disappointment. But what are you going to do? I mean, it's not like you, you had a position to be in and you got beat. It's just one of those days, one of those nights where the ball doesn't bounce your way. Now nope, Xander puts it off a leg. It goes off the leg the other way, and it's the unkindest bounce of all. Still, and we have to be honest about it, Neil, it's a 6-2 score line, and that's a proper score line. FC St. Pauli have been the better team on the pitch tonight. And Ben Pierman, believe it or not, will take a lot of this 6-2 score line and use it as motivation. Because anytime you have a situation where you kind of punch above your weight, there's a tendency, you know, you beat a, a team in Michigan Bucks that's your rival in the U.S. Open Cup. You took a professional team in FC Cincinnati to extra time. You're a little tired and leggy off of that. You have to come back and play this match. This will allow Ben Pierman to have some leverage heading into training and remind people that they need to focus and get to work and get ready for the league season. Friendly season is done. Cup season is done. Now you have one focus and one focus only, and that is get back to the NPSL Regional Championship and back to the National Final Four. I believe the offside flag will go up, and it does. So the offside call against FC St. Pauli. And it all gets rolling again on Friday night. Go to DeadCityFC.com for tickets. FC Columbus in town. It's Columbus coming into Michigan. I wonder if that's going to be any fun Friday night. I wonder if the people are going to be charged up for that one. You need to be here. Schneider sends it across. Yamantakos. Look at the way the St. Pauli players get into position. They give players options on the ball. And we're about done with this match. Shouldn't be much if any stoppage time. And that shot goes across Pena and over the line. And the whistle sounds. And this international friendly is in the books. 6-2 FC St. Pauli with the lead, but that is not the story. The story was the game of soccer. Thank you. We'll be right back. 6-2 the score. 6-2 the final score here from Keyworth. Good time had by all, and especially us here in the booth. And we appreciate everybody watching on Fox Sports Detroit. We'll see you on Friday night here at Keyworth. So long, everyone. Send it to Seattle and Tigers baseball.